Hi everyone, welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. For those of you who are new, welcome. I am a board certified internist and rheumatologist. And here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it is all connected. Today we're talking about a very specific antibody, but one that I've gotten some requests to go over, and that is the anti-centromere antibody. What the heck is it? Why was it tested? And oh my God, does this mean I have scleroderma? We're gonna go over everything. If this sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you like this video and subscribe, and most importantly, please share. That helps us get in front of more eyeballs and just helps the algorithm gods let, let everyone know that this is information that people want and need. And now, let's get into it. All right, so let's just jump in. What is a centromere in the first place? Like we're talking about the anti-centromere antibody, but let's like take a step back and be like, what in the world is a centromere? So we might need to like go back to high school biology. The centromere is a piece of DNA that is attaches the two chromatids to form a chromosome. <laughs> what? No, I know, I know, I know. So we all have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes and that's hence why that company is 23andMe. It's because we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and this is what, this is the structure that houses all of our DNA. So DNA is found in what? It's found in the nucleus of our cells. So this is an anti-centromere antibody. It's an antibody against this piece of DNA that is found on our chromosomes. So by definition, the anti-centromere antibody is an anti-nuclear antibody, an ANA. I bring this to your attention to say, it is very uncommon to have a positive anti-centromere antibody result on a lab test when you have had a negative ANA, anti-nuclear antibody result. So this is important because you know labs aren't, the, aren't perfect and they aren't the end all be all. And sometimes based on how a lab might run a sample of blood or the quality of the lab, sometimes you can get wonky type results. And having an anti-centromere result positive when you had the ANA be negative doesn't make a lot of sense and might require repeating the test. So that's the first thing. So the anti-centromere antibody is most closely related to the development of Crest syndrome, C-R-E-S-T, Crest syndrome, otherwise known as limited scleroderma. All right, 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 right. Hold up, before we get into the, even the possibility of scleroderma, which I know is like super scary, why in the world did my doctor check this? I don't think I have anything that looks like scleroderma. So one of the reasons might be if you went in and you had any signs or symptoms of Raynaud's syndrome, they might then check it. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I really recommend you go and check out the video all about Raynaud's. We talk about what it is and what kind of signs or symptoms to look for if it's related to something bigger. And I'll put that link in the description box. So that might be the first thing. Maybe you went in with Raynaud's and they were concerned so they checked the anti-centromere antibody. Most commonly, however, is the anti-centromere antibody is checked as part of a big panel of antibodies. So if you go in to see your doctor and you're having some rashes, some fatigue, or maybe some hair loss, and the doctor's kind of confused that there's something autoimmune going on, then they might check this box of this full antibody panel. And the two biggest lab companies in the US are Quest and LabCorp. And both of these companies and smaller companies have various different antibody panels that they will test for. So this just makes it easier for everyone and that the doctor can just check off a box and a bunch of antibodies are going to be checked. And these panels have been put together by experts and I'm by no means saying that there's something wrong with you know, doing it this way. What I am saying, however, is that 
these panels and the tests that are run, they were chosen, those antibodies were chosen because those are the antibodies that are most commonly found to be positive when someone has, for example, a positive ANA. They are not antibodies that are specific to your particular situation. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like a big net and seeing what you catch. And it's not necessarily specific to what you went to your doctor complaining or, or, or bringing to their attention. So on this big panel is an anti-centromere. And oftentimes an anti-centromere antibody is caught in that way and then you get told you need to see the rheumatologist to kind of delve into it more. All right, so let's delve into it more. Like I said, the anti-centromere antibody is associated with Crest syndrome. So Crest is otherwise known as limited scleroderma. And if you're starting to get anxious and freak out, I would really recommend that you go and check out my video on scleroderma. We talk about all the different types and, and all the details about scleroderma. So I really recommend you check that out. If you've been watching any of my other videos or, or kind of have been looking up other antibodies, you will know that the antibodies I've talked about so far, the anti-nuclear antibody or the ANA or the rheumatoid factor or RF, are antibodies that are really imperfect, meaning that they are oftentimes positive even in individuals who don't have any particular condition. So you can have a rheumatoid factor be positive and not have rheumatoid arthritis. And you can have an ANA be positive and not have lupus. And so I talk a lot about how these are just blood tests and you've got to consider, you know, how you're feeling and what the symptoms are and what your physical exam looks like. When it comes to the anti-centromere antibody, however, it's, it's, not, it's not the same. The centromere antibody is actually much more closely related to its associated condition than those other antibodies. And it's a lot less common to have what we call false positives. A false positive is simply when you have a positive antibody result on a test, but then you don't have the condition. That's, we call that a false positive. With the anti-centromere antibody, there aren't that many false positives. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone with the centromere antibody has Crest syndrome. In fact, you can see the anti-centromere antibody with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's, a lot of other conditions. But once an anti-centromere antibody pops up, it's really important that you start looking and see, well, what conditions could it be associated with? And the other thing to keep in mind is that studies are showing that people can have an anti-centromere antibody show up on their blood tests years before developing any conditions. Just to add to the anxiety, I know. Uh, the things I just said, whew, super scary. So let's just take a beat, take a moment. It's gonna be okay. It's really, it's gonna be okay. Keep in mind that even if your anti-centromere antibody leads to a diagnosis of Crest syndrome, not every Crest syndrome is the same. No patient is the same. Everyone is individual. I encourage you to keep that in mind as you kind of go down the rabbit hole of Dr. Google. So I want to get into some questions that you might want to think about for yourself and then some questions that you can bring up with your doctor to really get the conversation going. So things to think about for yourself. Number one, do you have Roy nodes? Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I really highly recommend you check out that video. But in short, Raynaud's syndrome is a condition where you get color changes in your fingertips and sometimes your toes to cold or stress. And you can have color changes that go from white to blue to red. So ask yourself, is this something that you've had your whole life? Have you just noticed this pop up in the last few months? Number two, are you noticing any other skin changes? Are you getting different kinds of rashes? Are you having any discomfort or tightness in your skin or, or numbness or tingling? Number three, are you having any worsening or maybe new heartburn? Never had heartburn before and now all of a sudden you're, it's like more part of your daily existence. And and then number four, really start digging into your family history. You know, autoimmune begets autoimmune. It doesn't necessarily need 
to have a family history of scleroderma or Crest syndrome in particular. Any autoimmunity is important to know. So that's going to include things like vitiligo, thyroid disease, things that oftentimes people don't, um, don't think of off the bat. And then some questions for you to ask your doctor. Number one, do I have any signs or symptoms that make you worried about Crest syndrome? And if so, can you help me see them? Can you help explain them to me? Number two, if I don't really look like I have Crest syndrome, are there any other conditions that this anti-centromere antibody could be related to? And if so, what other testing do, do we need to do to rule in or rule out those other conditions? Another question is, what are some red flags, signs or symptoms I need to be on the lookout for? It's really important, especially a lot of anti-centromere antibody patients land in a rheumatologist's office and get told, oh, this doesn't mean anything. Well, as we've said, studies are now showing that that centromere can show up years before something. And I want you to know what to be on the lookout for so that you can keep on top of it. And then finally, how often do I need to be checking in with you? You being the doctor. And you can just tell them, you know what, Dr. Ortiz said that this antibody can show up before I develop anything. And so I'd like to know how often do you want to see me? Maybe every six months, maybe once a year. Maybe I check in with my primary care doctor and get back to you if anything pops up. These are all questions I really think most rheumatologists would be happy to discuss with you and will really help arm you with information as you move forward with this anti-centromere antibody result. All right, so that was it. Those were my top three things about anti-centromere with some questions to think about for yourself and questions to maybe pose to your doctor. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe and like, share it with anyone that you know or think is struggling with this particular antibody. I know it's a very specific antibody, but I also know that it can be very confusing and very anxiety producing. So make sure you share it. It helps get in front of more, more people. And if you like this video, I think I've said that already, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement and mental health and wellness because it is all connected. Thanks and we'll see you next time. Bye.